it says concentrated hydrochloric acid, it's about 3 molar. This is concentrated acetic acid, it's also about 3 molar. This is dilute hydrochloric acid, probably about 0.03 molar. And this is dilute acetic acid, also about 0.03 molar. So we have strong and concentrated, weak and concentrated, dilute and strong, dilute and weak. So we're going to start by putting some universal indicator into each. We don't get a huge amount of distinguishment here. Here they're all red. So they're all acidic. Makes sense. So to add a little bit of observation and evidence to this, I've, I've put out a set of four approximately equal amounts of sodium carbonate. We're going to add them to each one to compare what the difference is between these four. Probably a little bit of a surprise there. So there's strong and concentrated. And weak and concentrated. We can get all of it in there, but I'm going to back up. Strong and dilute. And weak and dilute. So from our demonstration, we can see some differences and some actually surprising similarities. The hydrochloric acid and the acetic acid both reacted very similarly. And it looked almost as if the acetic acid reacted more vigorously. Well, that's probably just a, based on mixing or something uh, small. But we did see a very different reaction with the HCl and the acetic acid. Again, very similar between the two. And these two are very different than these. So when we're looking at strong and weak and dilute and, dilute and concentrated, one of the things we often miss is, well, what is an acid in the first place? And that, and that not being well understood can impact a lot of the definitions that come out of this. In fact, many of the people who define these things define these very poorly. So, so in the strong versus weak in particular, a lot of people define these in solubility terms. They say things like, when you dissolve this in water, here's what happens. And that's not a good way to look at this. So if we look at what an acid is, an acid is something bonded to a hydrogen that is capable of releasing that hydrogen, at least in the bronze lower level. And so we're looking at something that can, that can have this bond break. Where we produce an H plus and A minus. And what we often leave out of that is something has to come along and take that away. So something with negative charge bumps into this and removes this, and that's what an acid does. In our case, the, the water could do that as well as the sodium carbonate. The carbonate could come along and bump into that and remove it. So when we say strong and weak, we're looking at the ability to have that bond break. And so strong is something that's good at being an acid. And there are a number of ways to define that, one of which is that it has a very weak bond between the conjugate base and the H+. Plus. What we call the conjugate base A-. Minus. So in this particular case, the hydrochloric acid has a weaker bond than the uh, ethanoic acid or acetic acid has between the H plus and the conjugate base. Now, for distinguishment, here's what we see with that. In water, we're going to see that the strong acid, because it has the weaker bonding, is going to have more H pluses bonded to the water, forming hydronium ions. And we're going to see less of the, of the actual acid. So in the acetic acid, we're going to see quite a few of these molecules. And this, this is going to be ionized. 
And so many then jump in and say, well, that's our definition of strong. But it's really important that we start from this to recognize the acidic action, because not all the time are we taking place in water. And sometimes that, that definition is kind of the byproduct of being strong, rather than the definition of being strong. For weak, we're looking at not necessarily a strong bond, but a stronger bond between the H plus and A minus, and that's relative. Right? It's a comparison. Really, it would be better if we said stronger or weaker. The HC2, H3O2 is, is weaker than the HCl. And also, we're comparing those also to the water. The HCl is stronger than the H3O plus. The HC2, H3O2 is weaker than the H3O plus. Uh, and so, therefore, we, have, we can compare the bonding between those. Now, in dilute and concentrated, here we're looking at amount. And that is highly evident from this particular demonstration. When we're looking at dilute, we're looking at not very much acid in a given quantity. So we are looking at concentration, we're looking at the amount of acid compared to the amount of solution. But essentially, dilute means there's not very much. There's not very much strong acid, there's not very much weak acid. Okay? Now, in both of these cases, what's interesting, and concentrated, of course, would be lots of weak acid. In both these cases, when we added the sodium carbonate, that was different than the water. The water didn't really distinguish any of the four. But the sodium carbonate did very well, and that's because the sodium carbonate, whether this is strong or weak, whether it's good at releasing the H+, or not as good at releasing the H+, the sodium carbonate is good at removing the H+. So it didn't matter whether it was weak or strong, the H+, was going to come off of this. In both those cases, we had a relatively weak bond between the H+. The HCl was weaker, but in both those cases, the carbonate is very well equipped to come along and take that apart, and therefore we see an intense amount of, of carbon dioxide form very quickly in both of those particular instances.